Hi everyone. I hope you all are doing well as you always do. So basically what we have learned in the last class is all about the basic about the cell. We have learned about the cell theory and, and what did we learn? The properties and the characteristic of the cell. In today's part, what we are going to learn further the structural information about the cell. The main thing that we'll be covering, let's take a look. I don't have to introduce myself again and again, right? Okay, I'm not doing it. Let's start. I hope you can see my screen already, guys. Give me a second. It is just going to start here. So basically, guys, the next thing that we have to cover in this uh, today's lecture is we'll be learning about the structural information, uh, the structural organization of the cell. We'll be covering cell membrane and how does transport happen across the cell membrane and yes, the cell wall. So let's start. I will not waste the time, guys. Let's start. So basically, a cell is generally made up of three basic components, cell wall and cell membrane nucleus and cytoplasm. I must say cell membrane is the basic one because cell wall is only present in the plant cell. So basically, guys, suppose this is plant cell and suppose this is animal cell. On, uh, and uh, into the plant cell here, other than cell membrane, their cell wall will always be present. Ignore the way I'm drawing. This is cell wall. And internal to it, a cell membrane is there. And in animal cell, there's only cell membrane and then central nucleus is present. One thing, if you remember, guys, uh, into the plant cell here, nucleus is not present in this, at the center. Actually, in animal cell, nucleus is present at the center. But in plant cell, nucleus is present at the periphery because most of the space is taken up by the vacuum. That's the difference. But talking about what is the basic structure, cell membrane, nucleus, and the cytoplasm. So let's study further. The first thing that we have to understand, guys, is cell membrane or the plasma membrane. This is very thin, very delicate membrane. This membrane, it allows only certain material to pass through it, only specific material. And the material is actually the molecule that used to pass. It used to be selectively permeable, means it allows only selective material to pass through it. It is made up of lipid. If you don't remember, lipid is made up of, actually lipid belongs to the fat category. Fat belongs to the lipid category. Lipid is a big category. So into the membrane, this lipid is present and protein is present. And rest of the thing is also present that now I'm going to tell you. So onto the screen, you see this is a cell. Actually, um, if you remember, into the cell, all the molecules, they are known as biomolecules because bio means life. So these are the reason of life. So these are biomolecules. A cell is made up of that. Onto the picture, they have shown a magnified image of the cell, which is showing the image actually at the molecular level. So these are all the molecules. This is cell. And this is the membrane, the pinkish thing that you see. And they have cut a section of the membrane and there they are showing it. You don't have to be scared of the diagram. That's no one is going to ask you uh, in your paper. But the one that you need to know, I'm going to tell you. Not the structural information, but what you have to understand, this membrane is present two times. You know what? There were not two, uh, one person, but two person named Singer and Nicholson they have given a model for the structural information of the cell and that model is known as actually of the cell membrane i would say fluid and mosaic model fluid and mosaic mosaic means network that it, this membrane it looks like network fluid means it has fluid property like the water is there when you tap on the water now there are waves like this and then water get normal in the same way here also, the fluid means the membrane uh, is having all the molecules. When this is hit and all the molecules are settled down to normal, that's the fluid property. And that's why we say fluid and mosaic model. This was given by Singer and Nicholson. He has explained the structure of cell membrane in a beautiful way. The one that you see on the screen, that is actually explained by them. That these molecules, these this membrane is not present on like having a single kind of thing. It's having something two times. This two time is known as bilayer. Means half a layer, half a layer, that makes bilayer. Not two layers, but two parts of it. Bilayer. This is actually known as phospholipid bilayer. Suppose I'm saying that some organelle is single membrane, single membranous organ. Means this is having this membrane. 
if i'm saying double membranous it means this thing is present two times one more this this stuff will be present one more bilayer would be present like that way so this is the structure and e is each you know these molecules that you see actually these are the lipid molecules phospholipid bilayer phospholipid means lipid is attached with phosphorus uh, actually many of the students get confused at this lipid is attached with the phosphorus so this is phospholipid bilayer this is one phospholipid layer this is another phospholipid now into this phospholipid layer these things are present at the structural level this is known as head and this is known as tail now you understand this only you don't have to go into the structural information if you want to see it's in front of you this is a lipid it's a fat and the structure is given but you don't have to learn that i am going to tell you the structure of the membrane here this is a very black and white diagram but uh, i suggest you should go for this diagram this is easy to understand and many people just un, you know understand by looking at the diagram in the easiest way if you need to draw it it'll be easy to make simply saying so basically this is phospholipid bilayer like this is a cell a cross section a small section they have cut and shown there so this circle thing and the tail thing so this is head and tail now let me tell you head used to be hydrophilic water loving hydrophilic means water loving as in attracted to water and then there is hydrophobic water hating or water repelling type now let me change the pen color now let me tell you one thing guys there are phospholipid bilayer one time and two time now we used to say that through the membrane molecules are moving actually these molecules move through a channel and that channel is made up of the protein you see this is this is a protein this protein acts as a channel through which molecules move in and out like molecule used to move in and out through the channels and these are made up of protein now let me tell you into the membrane lipid is present protein is present this protein is present in two ways one it is present like a complete throughout this throughout protein is known as integral protein which is present throughout the membrane and this is the one which actually help in making the transportation now guys there is one more protein also you see this protein this protein the one that i'm circling right now this protein is not present throughout it is just additionally present this is known as peripheral protein actually this is only present at the periphery just remember it so there are two type of protein into the membrane so i am telling you a magnified diagram of the membrane of the cell like this and in this lipid molecules are present in a form of bilayer protein is present and additionally if you see in the diagram i suppose you want to know this carbohydrates are also attached protein see protein plus carbo uh, actually glyco what is used for carbohydrate so if protein is attached to the carbohydrate we call it as glycoprotein if lipid is attached to the carbohydrate we call it as glycolipid just additional knowledge i'm telling you but carbohydrate chain is also attached and that's it this is the membrane is that clear i'm going to show you one thing this is another diagram of the cell membrane like in a beautiful way that these all are the parts of the cell membrane and glycolipid glycoproteins are attached means protein and lipid uh, and pro uh, uh, protein and carbohydrate these things okay so in that integral protein and uh, protein channels these are all blue blue things these are all protein and they are present in different designs actually proteins are of different types and they are present in different designs so they are present in it but some protein act as a channel not all of them some protein protein channel is that clear guys the cytoskeletal element these are present inside the cell right now we are not discussing about it i hope i suppose you are looking at it is that clear now as i mentioned the fluid fluid in pos mosaic model property let me show you that video actually you will understand that even in better way i have opened my one note yes here it is you can see so guys in this picture now actually in this video uh, they have explained the fluid property look at this see this is a cell now they are magnifying the cell uh oh oh they are magnifying the cell like anything now they are moving nearby the cell and they are showing it at the molecular level this is the cell membrane see something is hitting on the cell membrane molecules move here and there and then molecules come back that's why we call it as the fluid 
property. Mosaic means network. Obviously, it appears like a network. In the next thing, what they have shown in it. Zoom video. Yeah. Now you see, see some uh, more molecules, carbohydrate, lipid, and everything is attached with it. Now the green thing they have shown uh, here, these are the protein channels, which act as a transport uh, molecules. And see, other molecules are moving through it in and out. This is what happened. Is that clear? That's it. That's, that is what I wanted to show you. Now, guys, let's come back to the presentation thing and let me continue. I hope that's clear to you. If you have any doubt, you know what you have to do. Now, guys, let's move forward and let's understand transport across the membrane. So basically, guys, you know that molecules used to move across the membrane and membrane is selectively permeable. Now, point arises how they move. Molecules across the membrane used to move by active and passive transport. Active is like a very active student sitting on the front bench of the glass and passive is like a uh, passive student. So active, this is the one that uses energy. And energy, this is important, guys. It can come in your board exam or Olympiads. So please listen to it carefully. It means energy. This is using energy at a very high scale, active. Passive means sitting like pa passive and no energy is being used. Now, guys, tell me one thing. Whenever we talk like uh, no energy is used, in this diagram, they have shown this only, na? molecules and channels, molecules moving in and out. So now, guys, um, whenever we talk about energy, what does it mean? What is energy? Do not think about that physics definition that you have learned. In bio, actually at the biological level, energy means a chemical that we are using. When we just do any work, we are using a chemical that is helping us. When the, actually that's a biomolecule. Name is ATP. I know that you know. Will form adenosine triphosphate. So whenever we are doing, I am speaking, I'm doing my body movement, my body is using energy. My body is using these molecules. ATP is adenosine triphosphate in which three phosphate molecules are present. So when these phosphate molecules, they're breaking up from that uh, bond is breaking up from their energy is being released. Into active and passive trans, especially in active one, only in active one, I would say this ATP is being used. Now, let me tell you one more definition. Let me see if I have a space there. Uh, no, I don't have a space. I'll just write it up there only. Understand this, guys. Suppose uh, you are standing here and this is a hill. Now, you are standing here. Imagine you have a ball with you. It's a big ball that you have to throw up there. You have to throw upstream. Obviously, you will need a lot of energy. Right? Now imagine a load of energy to throw it up. Now imagine you are standing here and now you have to throw that ball. Obviously, you don't have to even touch it. You just uh, put it up there and it'll just go. That is what active and passive transport. Into the active transport, molecules used to move. I'm just writing about active here. Molecules used to move from low to high concentration. Concentration means as an amount kind of thing, from low to high. That's why energy is needed to push. Into passive, molecules used to move from high to low. And that's why no in, high to low concentration. That's why no energy is utilized. Are you understanding this point? Now, let me give you an example. I'll just write example in different color. Mm, okay. Example of active transport is amino acid and glucose molecule inside the cell or throughout the cell membrane used to move by active transport. And passive transport example is carbon dioxide, oxygen, water molecule. It used to move by the passive transport. Is that clear now? Let's move forward. Okay, if you want to note it down, I can just wait for five seconds only because I know you can just pause the video and take a screenshot or something. Let's start. Now, guys, diffusion and osmosis. Let me tell you, diffusion and osmosis, they both are type of passive transport. 
here no atp is needed no energy is needed in both the cases molecules are moving from high to low concentration one difference is there into osmosis semi permeable membrane is involved and into diffusion membrane it, it doesn't have to take anything with the membrane let me give you a stupid example suppose this is a society i always give this example to my students and this is your friend's home this is a gate and here gatekeeper is sitting and here you are 